Hello and welcome, I'm Fernando, a GP in the UK. Today, I intended to do the usual monthly review of the NICE updates published in February 2024, focusing on what is relevant in primary care only. But surprisingly, and for the first time since I started doing this monthly update, I have not found any new information relevant to general practice. So instead, we're going to do an overview of what I think were some of the most relevant updates published in the whole of 2023. Right, so let's jump into it. In January 2023, there were updated quality statements on chronic heart failure in adults. They say that, if we suspect heart failure, we will check the BNP levels. If the result is high, we will organize an echocardiogram. If the echo confirms heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, we will give optimal doses of an ACE inhibitor or ARB and a beta blocker. If clinically indicated, we will also give a mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist, like spironolactone, an SGLT2 inhibitor, like dapagliflozin or empagliflozin, and refer for other specialist drugs if necessary. And we will review patients with heart failure within two weeks of any medication change, and at least every six months thereafter. In February 2023, there were new quality statements on UTI, saying that, we can diagnose women under 65 with a UTI without having to do a urine dipstick as long as they have at least two key urinary symptoms. Equally, we can also diagnose catheterized patients with a UTI based on symptoms without needing to do a urine dipstick. Three, we will give a three-day course of antibiotics to non-pregnant women with an uncomplicated lower UTI, but a seven-day course to men and pregnant women with the same and four, we will refer patients with recurrent symptoms. In March 2023, there were changes in the diabetes quality statements, saying that we should offer continuous glucose monitoring to patients with type 1 diabetes, and also to those with insulin-treated type 2 diabetes if they cannot self-monitor independently. Also, that adults with type 1 diabetes aged 40 and over should be offered a statin and that adults with type 2 diabetes should have an SGLT2 inhibitor if they have chronic heart failure, cardiovascular disease, or CKD. In April 2023, there was an update in the guideline on chronic hypertension in pregnancy, and we must make sure that we refer them appropriately, we stop ACE inhibitors, ARBs, and thyroid or thyroid like diuretics as soon as we know that they're pregnant or planning in pregnancy, because of the teratogenic potential. We will start treatment if the blood pressure is greater than 140 over 90, using a target blood pressure of 135 over 85. As treatment, we will give labetalol first line, then nifedipine if labetalol is not suitable, and then methaldopa if both labetalol and nifedipine are not suitable. And from 12 weeks gestation, we will also offer aspirin between 75 and 150 mg daily. This is for chronic hypertension in pregnancy, that is, a hypertensive woman that gets pregnant. The management of gestational hypertension, that is, a woman that becomes hypertensive during pregnancy, should be led by secondary care because of the risk of preeclampsia. In the postnatal period, if the woman is breastfeeding, we will give an alapril, unless the patient is of black African or Caribbean family origin, when we will give nifedipine or amlodipine. If one drug is not enough, a combination of enalapril with nifedipine or amlodipine can be considered. And if this combination is not suitable, atenolol or labetalol can be added. We will avoid diuretics and ARBs if the woman is breastfeeding or expressing milk. But if not breastfeeding, there are no special considerations and we will just follow the normal hypertension guideline. In May 2023, NICE started recommending QRIS-3 instead of QRIS-2, to estimate the cardiovascular risk. For primary prevention, we will give a tolvastatin 20 mg daily if the cardiovascular risk is 10% or higher, but we will also give it at lower levels based on our clinical judgment. For secondary prevention, it is a tolvastatin 80 mg daily. If a statin is given, we will check lipids and liver function tests at 2 to 3 months. After that, we will check liver function tests at 12 months but not again unless clinically indicated. An annual full lipid profile is recommended long-term as part of a medication review. Further cardiovascular recommendations were made in December 2023 in respect of lipid targets. 
The target for primary prevention is a greater than 40% reduction in non-HDL cholesterol. For secondary prevention, the target is an LDL of 2 or less, or a non-HDL cholesterol of 2.6 or less. If the target is not met with a statin alone, we should consider additional lipid-lowering treatment with acetimibe or the injectables alirikumab, evolocumab, and enclisiran. We can also consider acetimibe in addition to statins, even if the lipid target is met because studies have shown that the combination reduces cardiovascular events regardless of cholesterol levels. In June 2023, dapagliflozin was recommended for heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. It was already recommended for heart failure with reduced ejection fraction because it reduces cardiovascular deaths and hospitalizations for heart failure. Heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is managed by treating other comorbidities and giving loop diuretics, which help with symptoms, but do not reduce mortality or morbidity. Assumptions were made between the two types of heart failure and dapagliflozin is now recommended in all types of heart failure. Additionally, later in November 2023, the same approach was taken with empagliflozin, so both dapagliflozin and empagliflozin are now recommended for all types of heart failure. In July 2023, the guideline on obesity was updated. We will refer for bariatric surgery if they have a BMI of 40 or more, or over 35 with a significant comorbidity. The BMI threshold is reduced by 2.5 for South Asian, Chinese, other Asian, Middle Eastern, Black African or African Caribbean family background because of their higher cardiovascular risk at a lower BMI. There are three approved medicines for obesity, Liraglutide and semaglutide can only be given for obesity by secondary care, and Orlistat, which can also be prescribed in primary care. We can give Orlistat if the BMI is 30 or more, or 28 or more with associated risk factors. It should be continued beyond three months, only if the person has lost at least 5% of their initial body weight. But we can be flexible, especially with people with type 2 diabetes. In August 2023, the guideline on suspected colorectal cancer was updated and it now recommends fit tests in some situations where before a two-week rule cancer referral would have been recommended. Fit tests are now recommended in adults with an abdominal mass, with a change in bowel habit, with iron deficiency anemia, aged 40 and over with unexplained weight loss and abdominal pain, aged under 50 with rectal bleeding and one other symptom, either abdominal pain or weight loss, aged 50 and over with just one symptom, either rectal bleeding, abdominal pain or weight loss, and lastly, those aged 60 and over with anemia, even in the absence of iron deficiency. If we get a negative result, we will provide safety netting, which may include a watch and wait approach, or offering further tests, including another fit test or referral, especially if we are concerned because of unexplained symptoms. In September 2023, NICE updated the COPD quality standards, and we will now refer patients for pulmonary rehabilitation if they have a score of 3 or above on the MRC dyspnea scale, which means that they walk slower than contemporaries on level ground because of breathlessness, or have to stop for breath when walking at own pace. In October 2023, NICE recommended a new migraine medication, Remegepant, but only if at least two triptans have been tried before but were ineffective, or triptans cannot be used and paracetamol and NSAIDs are not effective. What is Remegepant? Well, Jepants are a new class of drugs that have been developed specifically for the treatment of migraines. Although the mechanism of action is not fully understood, we know that it blocks the receptor involved in the development of migraines. Unlike triptans, Japans do not cause vaccine constriction, so they do not have the same cardiovascular contraindications and cautions as triptans. Remegepant is an oral lophilicide that should be placed on the tongue or under the tongue and it will disintegrate in the mouth and therefore can be taken without liquid. In November 2023, NICE changed the postural hypertension recommendations. In summary, we will check the blood pressure in the supine or lying down position. 
and then we will recheck the standing blood pressure after at least one minute of the patient standing. This is better than the sitting to standing measurements. If the systolic blood pressure falls by 20 or more, or the diastolic blood pressure falls by 10 or more when standing, then we will diagnose postural hypotension. We should check for postural hypotension in people with symptoms such as falls or postural dizziness, as well as people with type 2 diabetes and those aged 80 or over. And if there is a significant postural drop, we will trip to a blood pressure target based on the standing blood pressure. In November 2023, NICE produced two tables to clarify the blood pressure target. And there are two tables, one for the under 80s and one for those aged 80 and over. And these tables cover people with hypertension, with or without type 2 diabetes, as well as people with CKD or type 1 diabetes. In order to keep it simple, I created a flowchart which merges both tables into one document. So, in the under 80s, we have two targets. The first target is below 140 over 90 for those with hypertension with or without type 2 diabetes and for those with type 1 diabetes or CKD and an ACR less than 70. The second target is below 130 over 80 for those with type 1 diabetes or CKD and an ACR of 70 or more. And in those aged 80 and over, we have three targets. The first target is below 150 over 90 for those with hypertension with or without type 1 or type 2 diabetes, regardless of ACR levels. Then the second target is below 140 over 90 for those with CKD and ACR less than 70. And finally, the third target of below 130 over 80 for those with CKD and ACR of 70 or more. You can find links to this flowchart or the tables produced by NICE in the episode description. And finally, in December 2023, NICE updated guidelines to incorporate new MHRA guidance on Valparate. This new guidance states that Valparate must not be started in people, either male or female, under 55 years of age, unless two specialists independently consider that there's no other treatment or that the reproductive risks do not apply. This is because of various reasons. 1. Valparate is a known teratogenic drug and therefore it is never safe in pregnancy. 2. There are risks of male infertility and testicular toxicity with it. And there are also concerns about possible transgenerational risks because animal studies have shown that some behavioural changes are transmitted by both males and females exposed to Valparate in the second and third generations. Well, that is it, a nice summary of last year. We have come to the end of this episode. Remember that this is not medical advice and it is only my summary and my interpretation of the guidelines. You must always use your clinical judgment. Thank you for watching and goodbye.